Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrift, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, we are back here at the Bastion, which I have been doing a little bit more work on, renovating it here and there. I've discovered a couple of really interesting little things, which I will briefly tell you guys about. For a start, walls will let light through, and this probably was the case before, but now walls can form basically a solid partition like this without any gaps in it. This is all uh, the polished blackstone wall and basically there is still a lava column behind that. I think it's behind this block here but since this is all connected up it forms a completely flat surface that still lets light through. If I stand here I'm still getting 13 block light which is not coming from any other sources even though there's a lantern up there. It is not providing any more light. There's actually a pretty harsh light source behind that which is providing light through this 3x3 three three of walls all stacked together. So that's a really neat trick to conceal lighting if you're using the new wall layout. Obviously you have to make sure that no blocks are attached to the back of that so you don't get the bumps in the walls. But I found that pretty cool. I'm also using walls for little archways here and there so that we can kind of run through this area. I might have that connect to a block at the top. We will see. But I've started this little storage area off to one side so that I can open my chests in peace without the piglins getting mad at me. Still figuring out exactly what to do with those guys. But in the meantime, I'm running into a couple of problems here. The main one being the amount of time and the amount of elytra durability it takes to travel to and from this area. Since I don't have a tunnel set up yet, there is no straight shot from here to the nether hub and back. And so my elytra is getting worn down pretty much every single time. I'm having like a third of the durability lost just finding the place because there is not a straight route to this place through the landscape of the nether either. I have to do a little bit of exploring before I can come back and find it again. So I am thinking that we need to set up some sort of XP farm and luckily the Bastion has provided one. Down here, right at the bottom of the world, <laughs> right at the bottom of the Bastion at least, we have this box which we actually completely blocked out in the previous episode when we were finding this thing and making sure it was completely safe. There is a magma cube spawner behind here and I intend to convert that into an XP and magma cream farm today. The fact that we have a new spawner in Minecraft for the first time since Blazes is, I think, something worth celebrating. And even if it wasn't something that I wanted to do for XP or for drops or anything like that, I would probably want to set up a spawner farm here anyway, just to figure out whether or not we could. But as you can see, I'm boxing myself in here because the first thing I will need to do is remove all of the treasure from this treasure room area and that means making the local piglins a little bit mad by breaking all of these gold blocks and the two chests that are in here. Fortunately for me though it seems like there aren't all that many piglins around right now. The ones that are seem to be more distracted by the zombie piglins than anything else and so I can hopefully walk off with all of this stuff without anyone getting too mad at me. And it looks like we're in the clear. Okay, very good. So I <laughs> I will probably end up taking down a fair bunch of this box and remodeling this area because I've been doing a couple of experiments in a creative test world, figuring out what the best way to set up this magma cube spawner is. And it's going to require a little bit of setup, but surprisingly, it's not as complicated as you might think. So I'm going to go away, grab a few more supplies. I will need some fire resistance potions just in case we get knocked into the lava around here. But from there, we can work on converting this thing into a magma cube spawner farm. Okay, we're back and I have a few supplies, which I'm going to stash over here for the moment because the majority of the work we need to do is just preparing the area around the spawner. But I brought myself some iron golem supplies and a few more building blocks that we're also going to put to work around the bastion here. So down here below the magma cube spawner, which is still safely blocked off behind this giant cube of blackstone, we're going to be removing all of the blocks around the treasure room. We're going to be flattening this entire thing out. I'm not going to remove the entire lava lake, but I do need to collect a couple of lava sources in buckets so that we can use them a little bit later on. I'm just going to take down everything up until lava level and we're going to lay out a floor underneath the magma spawner like so, just to make sure that there is a solid floor for the magma cubes to sit in, because when they get in lava, they tend to slow down a little bit. Now, once you've leveled out the treasure room in the center, you'll probably find that there's a little bit of a lava lake still here, but hopefully this is not going to be all that deep. And all we'll need to do is just place in a few blocks to make sure all of the lava is covered up like so, usually just a couple of blocks deep in these areas. And we hit the bottom of the bastion structure or even the floor 
of the nether itself. And with that all filled in, this is what we're left with. So we have a 9x9 area of polished basalt underneath here, which is the footprint of the area in which magma cubes will be able to spawn. And if I walk over here and dig straight up, yep, there we go. There is the spawner spinning away because we are in close proximity, but it's not going to spawn anything quite yet. We have to remove all of these blocks before it will do that for the first time. And there's a bit of setup needed before we start. So there's going to be a three block long wall on either side here, one there and one there. So this can leave a three block hole. And if we end up digging out this area, now that we've placed all of these blocks in there, we might still find the occasional lava source. But what we want to do is dig a three block wide and four block long trench here. And at the end of this trench is going to stand an iron golem that's going to be attracting all of the magma cubes in towards it and causing them to fall into a pit, which we're going to dig here. And this looks like the point at which we all probably need to drink a fire resistance potion and jump in here and place some blocks manually because I cannot find anything down there to place some blocks on. And we need to dig this shaft down probably about six blocks before we reach the area where we want to kill the magma cubes because magma cubes can jump pretty high and we want to make sure that they can't jump out of this pit once they are in it. So let's hop down here. Let's place a few more blocks heading downwards, and hopefully we will encounter the floor pretty soon. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we just need to build up the wall around the outside of this, making sure we still have a 3x4 area down here. The other factor at work here is that ideally we want to be standing in close enough proximity to the spawner that it will still be working while we are down here hitting the magma cubes with a sword. And so we'll need to make an AFK spot only a couple of blocks out from this, which right now is also completely surrounded by lava. So <laughs> thankfully I have enough fire resistance potions on me that we should be able to set something like that up pretty easily with just a ladder or something heading up and down from it to make sure that we can get there safely. But back up at the top here, we're going to mark out these three by two sections on either side where we're going to have a little bit of lava flowing down here and that is going to basically push the magma cubes in towards the center very gently now magma cubes can swim in lava so they can resist the flow of lava current but they're going to have a distraction over here in the form of an iron golem that's going to be basically luring them in towards the center and they are mostly going to be able to see the iron golem from all sides here we are going to have the iron golem behind some trapdoors here to make sure that the uh, magma cubes can't get to it and that it doesn't walk out but that is hopefully going to lure all the magma cubes in towards the middle and the lava flow is going to make sure that they go over the edge here. Now in this case I'm able to use wooden trap doors because I have fire spread turned off in this world and I'm also going to use fence gates along the sides here to block the lava flowing out from either side. But if you don't have fire spread switched off in your world, you should be able to arrange a series of fences here in a way that the golem is still visible to all of the magma cubes pathfinding their way over and it cannot get outside of that. It just means you need to reorient this area and have the fence wall kind of closed off on this side here so that magma cubes don't jump onto a block and then get stuck there. So with these little lava basins here on either side, we're going to build up the walls around the outside here, making sure that we encompass the entirety of the spawnable space of this spawner. And I'm fairly certain this wall here is actually one block too long. So we have the entire thing kind of mapped out along the side here and we shouldn't get anything spawning in that space either. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're actually going to have to give this spawner a little bit of headroom so that we have the maximum opportunity for the largest magma cubes to spawn, which means we're actually going to take this all the way up to the height of this kind of mezzanine floor here. <laughs> this little section around the outside there is the perfect height to make sure that we have at least two and a half blocks, in this case three blocks, available above the spawner for large magma cubes to spawn. Which means we're going to have to reorient this bridge a little bit, but that's not the biggest concern right now. Just make sure when you're building the case around the spawner that the roof starts three blocks above the spawner cage itself and you should be fine. And for once, we don't need to worry about there being a slab on top of the spawner block itself blocking spawns from happening, simply because since magma cubes don't take full damage and they move by jumping, they basically have to jump off the top of the spawner, meaning there's no need to block that off anymore. I'm actually going to build this cozy little back room for the iron golem to sit in now just to make sure that we can spawn it in okay and then leave it be for the rest of this. We are just going to spawn in one iron golem to begin with but I brought enough for four just in case things go wrong because occasionally you'll find these guys end up suffocating in blocks while they are here and I just need to give this one a quick nudge to make sure he stays inside this area. That's the problem because sometimes you'll end up with them poking out of the opposite side of the trapdoors and you don't want them them pathfinding out into the rest of the farm. 
But if I just give him a quick nudge like so, and hopefully that should mean he is inside that box. Now, if he ends up walking out through the trap doors, we may need to spawn another one one block back. Since the Iron Golem can potentially aggro against other mobs, I am going to make sure that he's got a roof over his head, and we're also going to extend that roof out a couple of blocks just to make sure that the jump height of the magma cubes that spawn in here is limited so that they don't end up jumping up onto something that they shouldn't be and in fact I might even take out oh oh gosh we just hit the iron golem there but that's fine because this one is one I made myself so we don't need to worry about it getting aggro on me we'll take out the rest of these trap doors here just so it has easy line of sight to the other mobs and the other mobs can see it nice and easily and it looks like he did end up phasing through the trapdoors after all, which they shouldn't normally be able to do, but it seems like he was still partly inside these trapdoors and his hitbox didn't present like a full barrier for them. So not to worry, we're just going to build an Iron Golem on this side now instead, and we'll have to deal with the fact that he might suffocate in a couple of blocks when we originally create him. But with a roof over his head like this, we shouldn't have too much trouble if we make him. Yes, there we go. We can put him like that push him up against the trapdoors, and then place in the rest of these blocks before his hitbox takes over. <laughs> there we go, perfect. We've got him in. That guy should be permanent. That guy should not end up with any kind of problems. And the guy down there in the hole is not going to be so much of an issue either, because when we end up opening up this area in a second, he's probably just going to die in the lava, unfortunately. But this guy behind here is now our sentry. He's the one who's going to be luring all the magma cubes in once they start spawning in this area. Speaking of the lava, I've brought down a few fence gates here. We'll need three on either side like so. So we're going to open each of those out, which is going to block the lava that flows in from both sides here from flowing down into the hole and allowing the magma cubes to climb it back up. And now we should just need a couple of buckets of lava from the outside here. One in this corner here, the other one in this corner here, and that should allow them to flow towards the area where the iron golem is. They will try and pathfind to him, fail and jump down this hole. And even though there is a gap there at the top where the iron golem's eyes are poking out, the smaller magma cubes are the only ones that will really be able to fit through that gap, and they won't be able to jump that high from this area, meaning that they will have no choice but to jump down into the hole in attempts to get to the Iron Golem. At this point, we are pretty close to getting the farm up and running. There are three things we need to do. The first is to create an area down there where the player can stand still within range of the spawner to activate it, but then able to dispatch all of the magma cubes as they fall down there. Then we need to finish boxing off this area so that the entire thing is enclosed and the magma cubes cannot escape. And then last of all, we need to take out all of this blackstone and see if the farm works. So with the magma cube spawner all boxed off now, it does look like we are going to need to dive down into the lava once again because there are no blocks down there that I can place any extra blocks against. And we need to set up an AFK area that is going to be six blocks below the ground level of this spawner so that we can stand within range of the magma cube spawner to make sure the cubes will still spawn in and also have a safe space for the player to stand swiping away at them. And sadly, once we let some lava into this area, our first iron golem is going to die of lava damage. We'll probably lose that iron to the lava, but that's not the biggest concern I have right now. There we go, we pretty much have an area dug out next to this that we can use as a killing area. Now we need to count down from the top here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and right there is where we're going to be placing the killing floor for this spawner. We're going to make sure that we use slabs and bottom half slabs for this just so that we can have a series of hoppers running out to a chest over on this side collecting all of the magma cream, and if we place a row of blocks at the top here and only have a half block space that we can swipe at the magma cubes from. We don't need to worry about getting hit by any of the cubes and even the smallest ones will not be able to make their way out through that gap. So I need to grab myself a few more blackstone slabs and a few hoppers. We can put the storage chest on the side here. We'll just do a double chest like that even though I expect we won't get too much magma cream from this. I do have a looting sword though so we should be getting as much as we possibly can. And with a few ladders leading back out to the top here all we should need is some blackstone slabs and the rest of those hoppers and we should have a pretty nice setup here and the hoppers can just go in in a nice straightforward pad like so i will need to make my way out of here though and i'm a little bit worried that my fire resist potion is about to wear out so i just need to make sure i have a little bit of headroom here to work with yep there we go okay we'll pop 
some more hoppers just facing into this hopper connected to the chest here and then from this side we'll just place in this row of slabs like so and that should give me enough room to swipe at all of the magma cubes that come into here if i stand right next to the platform they'll be able to hit me when i hit them but the rest of the time if i just stand a few pixels back on this block i should be able to reach all corners of this area without the magma cubes hitting me in retaliation now all we should need to do is take out the rest of the black stone surrounding the magma cube spawner which is potentially going to be the most dangerous part of this entire process but once we're out of there we should hopefully have a fully functional magma cube spawner farm so here we go a moment of truth for this farm i am going to remove the top layer first because it's not actually doing anything it is two blocks above the height of the spawner and is therefore not really causing us any trouble but once i start removing blocks from this second layer that is where the magma cubes should start to spawn and so maybe i should do this from the bottom upwards but either way we should yep there we go we should start to see a few magma cubes spawning here and there and i'll need to get some food on my hotbar to make sure i don't get absolutely destroyed by them in the meantime probably a good idea to open up the bottom part of the farm first so they can drop through and hopefully make their way towards the iron golems and then I will need to make my escape out through the wall. So let me block myself in here and hopefully this should all go according to plan. Pretty soon we should be able to observe the farm in action though. Yes, as you can see that large magma cube made its way towards the iron golem and is now down there in the hole. The little one is pathfinding towards me right now but if the only thing that's in here that they can pathfind towards is that iron golem they should have no problem finding their way towards him and then into the hole and the iron golem should be protected from any attacks even by the larger magma cubes if they end up wandering in that direction whoa there's a couple of larger ones spawning now this is getting a little bit hectic up here especially now i've removed most of the blocks meaning that the magma cubes have even more space to spawn than they did before but we just got this last layer to remove and then hopefully we should be able to see this farm in action. Now much like other spawners, they do not need a solid block to spawn on, meaning that magma cubes are potentially just going to rain down from the roof here in a second. Let me get rid of all of these first of all, make my way out through the wall and you'll see that the, yep, the larger ones can spawn in here nice and easily. All right, let me hop out the wall here and make sure that's all blocked up and oh, <laughs> I feel like I barely escaped with my life at that point. But now... If they're not aggro at me, they should start getting aggroed at the Iron Golem, which will mean when we come down here, we have, yeah, a pretty solid platform of them. And now I can just stand over here, getting all of the experience and drops into this chest. Perfect. That's working flawlessly. And as long as I stand far enough back from this platform, you'll notice if I walk up to them like this, then occasionally they can land on me and will sometimes hit me. But then their hitboxes should push them a little bit further away. Now, the only thing that remains to be seen is, am I still activating the spawner from this position? Because if not, we might just have to move the hoppers and this platform up by one block. But I can hear them squishing up there, so it seems like we may still have a few of them around. Yep, there we go. We've got a couple falling in here now. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. This is working super, super well. I can definitely hear some of the larger ones squishing around up there and occasionally they will make their way towards the iron golem but before they are able to hit the iron golem it will hit them and it should break up the larger ones into some smaller cubes with its attack meaning we might even see a few of the medium sized cubes making their way down here in the end but judging by the amount of magma cubes that are popping down here it seems like we are still within activation range of the spawner which is ideal i will just bring my camera account in to make sure that that is the case but it does seem to be that we are <laughs> close enough to the spawner for more magma cubes to spawn. And look at that, my elytra is already repaired, so that is mission accomplished. Yep, there we go. As you can see, the magma cubes are up in here, and that large one is, yep, there we go, finally going to make its way down here into the pit. The other one is going to follow, and <laughs> you'll notice that sometimes they end up colliding with each other, which is what really helps them get into the pit in the first place. But wow, we got some, we got some big ones up in here. As you can see, the headroom on top of the spawner block is allowing some of the larger magma cubes to spawn. They should make their way down here with the flowing lava and I think the player continuously swiping at the ones in the pit is really going to help because some of the larger ones are going to be blocking the other large ones from <laughs> falling down in here thanks to the fact that they can jump so high and a little bit of collision happens. But luckily it seems like my calculations were good and we are within spawner activation range where I stand down here in the pit. If I walk to one side or the other 
If I look on my camera account view on the opposite side, if I stand over here, it seems like the spawner is still activated, which means we should be getting some stuff spawning whenever the magma cubes have cleared out of this specific area. And when they're down in the pit, it means more magma cubes can spawn. You'll see there that the iron golem is attacking those larger magma cubes, and thankfully it looks like he isn't taking damage as a result. So occasionally we'll see some of the smaller ones making their way down into the pit here, and... <laughs> Now we get to see the test. Will that large magma cube make its way down into the pit? Thanks to the lava flow on either side. It looks like, yep, there we go, it did. It's slow because lava does push stuff very, very slowly, but they do make their way down here. And it looks like we have a pretty solid magma cube farm set up. Well, that is very good news, folks. I don't even know how much magma cream I've gotten from the farm so far. Let's open this up and find out. Yep, there we go. We've got almost two stacks of magma cream. I've been at this for less than five minutes. So this is, this is looking pretty good as far as a magma cream farm goes as well. Obviously, there are many different ways of getting hold of that. You can craft it. You can barter it with piglins in this update, although I believe that barter is getting removed in the 1.16.2 update but either way we have ourselves a pretty viable magma cube farm set up here this is not the most efficient magma cube farm we'll be able to build in this series though because we could go out to a basalt delta where these guys will spawn in much larger numbers and we don't have to rely on a spawner cube being present for us to be able to farm them in the first place. But that is for another episode. For now, I think I'm pretty satisfied with the work that we've done here. And that is about time to wrap up this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Folks, I do hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to be farming magma cubes for days here. Let me know if you enjoyed the episode in the comments. Leave a like on it for me as well. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.